far away and much more locations with an extraordinary family of actors. And now is the time for all of you in our chat room to begin typing in your questions for them. Immediately after this session, you will have the opportunity to talk to them directly through our private chat options, as well as shop our selection of personalized autographs, all of which are available now at galaxycon.com. So without further ado, let's bring out today's guests. Our first guest is an actor and gamer whose credits include Harry Potter and a Deathly Hallows Part 2, Dwarves Assemble, and the role of Ewok Pomet Warwick in Star Wars Episode 9. Please welcome Harrison Davis. Hello. Hello, Harrison. How you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I am doing well on my side of the world. How are things on yours? Yeah, going good. I'm over here in England, yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm in I'm in Florida, so uh, I've 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 met many of your countrymen over here on holiday. Oh yeah, cool. Nice <laughs> great over there. So so Harrison, real quick, I know you are an avid gamer. Uh, curiosity, is there anything that you're playing right now that uh, you're really into? Uh, I'm mainly playing a lot of FIFA at the moment. Yeah, I like my football. Yeah. Okay, awesome, awesome. And uh, you have a YouTube channel. Uh, are you going to be re re revisiting that anytime soon? Uh, yeah, I've got a few videos lined up for that. I brought a thing off and on it, but I'm hoping to restart uploading on that again, yeah. Awesome. Well, absolutely looking forward to it. Holy, we'll talk a little bit more about that. So in the meantime, let's bring out your sister. She is an actress whose credits include an award-winning role in The Dumping Ground, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2, and roles in Star Wars Episode 9. Please welcome Annabelle Davis. Hi, yeah, you're right. Hello. Hey. hey, Annabelle, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I am doing well on my side of the world. Uh, how are you doing? Not bad, not bad. Uh, currently filming The Dumping Ground. Uh, it's going well, but uh, yeah. It's it, it's it's. I don't think it's quite going to count on yet. But uh, over the past like couple of months, I have met American fans of Dumping Ground. I've recently oh, just wow. discovered okay, it, cool. and I think it's. I think. I think it might. I think it might be something that might catch on over on our side of the pond. And um, yeah, I think um, you can you can get it on YouTube and stuff, but it's a little bit hard to get it over there. I think, but uh, that's pretty really cool. No, yeah, it absolutely is, and uh, a wonder, a wonderful concept. It, it really is. It's, 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 it's. I, I, I've caught a few episodes in, in the past couple of months, and I was like, "Why isn't this brought over here? Why is this?" I, I just a, a great cast, and and you, you really, you really shine in it. Thank you. Yeah, it's a lot of fun today. It's a lot of fun. Absolutely. Absolutely, indeed. And speaking of a lot of fun, uh, let's bring out your dad. <laughs> uh, he is an actor and producer whose body of work includes such film series as the Leprechaun series, the Harry Potter series, Willow, of course, and a plenitude of Star Wars characters throughout the franchise's entire history, going back to Return of the Jedi. Please welcome back Warwick Davis. Thank you very much, Patty. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Oh, thank you, boss. Glad to, great to see you again. How you been doing? I've been doing okay, thank you. Very well. Yeah, pretty busy, considering we're in lockdown here. I'm still keeping very busy. I uh, obviously true. Um, so I've read some articles. I haven't seen too much follow up, but uh, Willow may be back in the cards in the future. Well, you know what? With all of these things, I'm sworn to secrecy, so can't of course. Really talk at all about that. But uh, needless to say, people who are fans of Willow should be very excited right now. And that I will I will leave it at that, and we look forward to um, more information as is allowed to be discussed. But absolutely. again, always, and but absolutely though, it, it, just like you said, you are you are one of the hardest working fellows in, in the entertainment industry. And uh, again, you've had your you, you've been on the pulse and a representative of the Star Wars franchise. And of course, you are a fantastic panel host and moderator in your own right. Yeah, I miss doing that. You know, since. Um... So well, since there have been no real events, I've really missed being on stage in front of the audience. So it's really nice to virtually be there this afternoon as well here in the UK. It's fabulous. And also joining me, the rest of my family here as well, which is great. I know. This is absolutely wonderful. So, and, and speaking of, uh, of our physical conventions, yes, all of us here at GalaxyCon are looking forward to the day when uh, we can host uh, talented guests such as yourselves on our physical stages and get you back in front of your fans and maybe we can see the light at the collective tunnel on that. And uh, but in the meantime, we have the Galaxy Con virtual stage. So glad to have you all here. Thank you very much, Patty. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. So our team is going to the chat room right now, pulling out the questions. In the meantime, I would just 
instead of getting just straight to the Star Wars stuff, I'd love to talk about uh, your collective Harry Potter experiences, and uh, oh, yeah. especially uh, Harrison and uh, the banana. <laughs> he doesn't like talking about this, but uh, <laughs> you know, the, the kids were introduced to Harry Potter from a very young age because when uh, Harrison was born, I was working on the movies, so both of them more or less grew up on the set of Harry Potter. They'd visit after school most days. Annabelle had her 13th birthday on set. Yep. Tell the story about that, Annabelle. Yeah, it was so, literally uh, the only Sunday I ever worked on the movies, mm -hmm. and it coincided with Annabelle's birthday. So I said, would wow. you uh, allow her to come and visit that day? And I said, yeah, sure, yeah. We'll be filming a, a scene in the Great Hall that day so she can come in. Great. You uh, take it was over, pretty cool. I, I really enjoyed it. We spent the first sort of morning in your trailer uh, when I got a couple of presents, and then um, they said, oh, do you want to come on set? So we came, like, watched a page of the scene, and then uh, came out into the Great Hall, and then they brought out a Colin the Caterpillar cake, which is my favourite. Um, and then everyone sang Happy Birthday to me, including Alan Rickman. And it just, it was totally surreal. And then they did the Golden Board um, of that week. So if you watch in the special features of um, the last film, one of the Golden Boards, they're very quick. One of them is my 13th birthday. Um, yeah. So can you imagine Alan Rickman dressed as Snape singing Happy Birthday? <laughs> I I, I, I I can, but I don't want to. I don't want to create a new obsession. I got too many. <laughs> <laughs> what a what a wonderful memory! Wow. Yeah. So that Harrison is... was brought into the franchise at a very young age. Um, he played the part of a goblin along with Annabelle. If you watch Deathly Hallows Part Two, the first time we see Gringotts in that movie, there's a, a wide establishing shot of the bank, and across mm -hmm. the middle of the hall walk two goblins towing a gar cart full of gold, mm -hmm. and uh, one of those was Harrison, one was Annabelle. So Harrison had, um, instead of a prosthetic makeup, a mask, slip over mask on because he was so yeah. young. Yeah. And um, so he did several takes. As you do with these things, you have to do it over and over. And he couldn't understand why we had to keep doing it again. I said, well, they've got to get it right, Harrison. That's why. So do it one more time. He said, well, I'm not doing it any more times. I'm hungry. I said, okay, we can eat in a minute. Do it one more time. Let's get it done. Come on. No, no, I want to eat now. So I was like, okay, can we get a banana, please, for Harrison? So Harrison sat in the uh, producer's chair eating a banana extremely slowly. That was one of the most expensive bananas ever consumed. <laughs> Tens of thousands of dollars were wasted while he sat there eating this banana. The producer tapping his foot by the chair, looking at Harrison and like, okay, we've it, we finished, yeah? Can we carry on? So off we went and we did an amazing take and uh, they wrapped the scene just after that. So uh, that is the famous banana story of Harry Potter. <laughs> But I'm sorry, Harry Potter. Well, I, 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 again, at six years old, I've a, you're a trooper, nevertheless, and yeah. just just having to put a big, big, giant head, you know, at least it wasn't prosthetics yeah. or whatever, which, yeah, would have Yeah, exactly. I don't know who he takes after, though. I've never sat there and said, I'm not doing any more filming until I eat. <laughs> it mean like a banana help, though, if I did it right after. Exactly. Yeah, you got exactly. it right yeah, after yeah, that. Yeah. One, I was about to say one take after, boom, does. So, uh, yeah. mm -hmm. so if you if you're lucky enough to come over to the UK and uh, go to the studio tour in London, you'll look out for Harrison and Annabelle's makeups. Well, their their slip over masks are actually on display in the uh, exhibit there. Very nice. Very nice. Mm. Very nice. So. Uh, and of course, uh, another part of the family business, of course, has been the association with Star Wars, and uh, you've all taken uh, part in that. Um, Warwick, yeah. of course, goes back, but uh, Annabelle, I'd love to hear about your Star Wars experience. Uh, yeah, so I got called in um, for a fitting for episode seven, uh, which I was just I'm really excited for. And I played um, on set, they were known as the Minions, but the character named Thromba, and there were two of them, these cosmetic surgeons. Um, but I've got to say, I'm so glad beforehand that sort of gave me a little pep talk about how yeah. to cope with a hot head because it's just so hot. You can't really imagine it until you're in it. And I was like, oh my days. Uh, but it was it was really, really fun. And then I was lucky enough to work with Dad again then on Solo, where we mm -hmm. both took it in turn to be inside one of the fighting robots. Uh, and oh. when one time when I was in, Dad was then controlling the animatronic uh, yeah. and stuff going on outside. So. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Well, the handy thing is Annabelle is a similar height to me, so she fits in all of my costumes. Um, on yeah. Solo, I had so many different roles. They hadn't actually realized some of the characters appeared in the same scene at the same time, so I couldn't play all of them at the same time. So Annabelle jumped in. I could give her a quick pep talk about how to play the character, and then she was able to double me perfectly. 
She uh, even doubled me as Weasel as well on the back of the swoop bikes in Solo. Yeah. That would have been That's, fun. Never done that anything it, like that. <laughs> uh, most people in the world have never done anything yeah. <laughs> can, can say they played a creature on a speeder bike or or been a part of the, of the star wars universe so that, yeah, that was a lot, a lot of fun that that's miraculous and that's that's a, a wonderful thing yeah oh wait wait we have two works characters at the same time uh. <laughs> yeah that's what it was like yeah yeah and uh fortunately for harrison before star wars kind of finished jj abrams came up with this idea of having uh, wicket back in the movie and thought it'd be so nice to have an offspring of Wicket, namely Pomet Warwick, and uh, he should be played by Harrison, which was a lovely idea as well. Yeah. So Harrison got to experience what it was like to be sautéed live inside <laughs> a New York costume. <laughs> They're very hot, aren't they, Harrison? Yeah. Hey, not to the point where I couldn't really see anymore. Now you fell over a few times, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gracious. Well, that was... Uh, it, that, again, the, there's there's so many key scenes in, in that film that, that that JJ put on in, and again, I think everybody in the theater lost his spine. It's like, ah, mm. it's wicked. Oh, he's got a kid. That's wonderful. Yeah, that was yeah, really was great. Nice. If you check out the extra features from uh, Rise of Skywalker, there's a lovely little documentary about kind of yeah. me and Harrison kind of preparing for the roles. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, Harrison, what was your reaction to uh, uh, you were gonna play you were gonna you were gonna play Pomet? How was that? What was it like? I remember it was, um, it was like August sometime, and I remember Dad coming up to me and was like, how do you feel to be in Star Wars? And I, won't, I don't think we knew what the role was at that point, but like, Dad was like, you want to be in Star Wars? And I know I just felt really excited to be able to be part of a project that yeah. is so big around the world. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, so uh, probably more for uh, for Harrison and Annabelle. But uh, what what's it what's it like to uh, what was it like growing up, seeing your father in in all these feature films and maybe going to the events and stuff? And what what's it like being jo joining the family business? I don't know. I think as a kid, I didn't really associate him with being sort of famous, Warwick Davis. He was just that. Um, yeah. But we're always really grateful. Like going to all the events was always a lot, a lot of fun. But then even sometimes, like to be honest, it was only the other day I was watching sort of a clip out of Harry Potter for some reason it came up. I was like, oh, father, you're doing really good. As a kid, I don't think I associated him as the same person on screen. But I knew it, but it's it's only now when I've been fortunate to do work myself, I kind of get it, and now I'm like. Oh wow, I really understand what he's working with. Whereas, so I'd go and visit him at work, and he'd be, you know, have the goblin face on. But it was, to me, it was, it was almost normal. It was just yeah. like, oh, okay, Dad sort of dressed up again. But um, yeah. no, it, it was a really cool world to grow up in, and yeah, I'm really lucky to sort of be having a go at it myself as well. Outstanding. How about you, Harrison? I mean, yeah, the same thing about it. Sort of growing up, I would always see Dad go off to do the thing that like I never really understood what it was he was really doing and then it's like I would see the film after like I remember when I watched Willow the first few times the bit where Dan like getting a cat by a massive troll from the castle I used to for some reason think if he was being hurt and then I would run through to Dad in the house being like you're being a cat from Willow <laughs> I, I, I didn't I didn't mean to understand the fact that he was there when it was a film <laughs> <Isn't> it <weird? laughs> uh warwick you must be very proud oh i am indeed absolutely yeah i mean uh i didn't push them into becoming actors because i know what a challenging career it can be you know sometimes you go periods without there being any work you know i count myself extremely lucky to be working most of the time so mm -hmm. and it's not like that for every actor i know for a fact so I didn't push them into this. They decided this is what they want to do. And uh, yeah. I believe in life you should always follow your dreams and, and what your passion is. And uh, if you want to do something, just go for it. Absolutely, absolutely. And speaking of going for it, looks like we are good to go on our audience questions. So thank you for entertaining mine, and let's entertain some of our audiences. Very cool. And all right, this first one comes from Dylan, and they want to know, what is each of your dream roles in a movie or TV series? Hey, Dylan, thanks for this question. Uh, for me, I'd love to play a detective of some sort. I'm a big fan of the series Columbo, 
Um, I don't think I'll, li I'll have the cigar, though, but I'd love to be some sort of detective, sleuth kind of character. Maybe even mm -hmm. a James Bond character with uh, lots of gadgets and stuff. That's pretty cool. That works. Yeah. That works. Yeah. Yeah, How about I, you? I, I love Sherlock, so that kind of a character is really cool as well. But actually, personally, like right now, Stranger Things is so cool. Just anything in Stranger Things to be in that world would be amazing. So. There's no reason why there couldn't be uh, another warp opening over in the UK and another group of kids that run afoul yeah, of it. I know. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, know, I, I, I actually don't like being upside down. All the blood goes to my head. So. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so, Harrison, you have a dream role you'd like to tag? Uh, well, I'm quite a fan of the Kingsman theory. So, I think to me coming apart from that would be really good. Like, I know I find them feel really fun to watch. So, yeah, I think maybe a villain in that. Very good. Yeah, those are, those are, those are very fun by, based on by Mark Millar. And Dylan, thank you. Great question to start us off with. What do we have next? And here's one from Maggie. Did you keep any props from any of the film sets that you have worked on? Thanks for this, Maggie. Yeah, I'm going to rummage back here a second before I want to answer this question. Guys, you <laughs> okay. can take over while I'm looking for something. Well, when I was younger, Dad actually smuggled something off the set for me. Um, when the Ministry of Magic set, he, he took a packet of sugar. So I've got a, a Ministry of Magic, um, <laughs> Ministry of Magic uh, sugar packet. So, oh, nice. Yeah. yeah, they were all... um custom made for the movie because there was They're like really a cool. co coffee stand in the ministry of magic that's where they yeah, were that's right you shouldn't have said that well i get into trouble now but oh, this here yeah. is this is a real gringotts galleon so this is in fact Ooh. annabelle's and it was <laughs> oh, given wow. to annabelle by one of the producers so it's a legitimate um we legitimately own this and, yes uh, <laughs> so this was a real coin it was minted by a an actual coin mint in the uk for the film so it's very heavy and uh, it's a really lovely piece to have, actually. Yeah, the real Gringotts Galleon there. Very nice. Very cool. Very nice indeed. Harrison, were you able to uh, come into possession? Is that how I usually pose the question? Of <laughs> anything from what you worked on? <laughs> I don't believe I have anything, to be honest. And like Star Wars and all so top secret, they wouldn't let you have anything. And yeah, and Harry Potter, it became. We've only got the green dot scallion. Yeah. I don't think I have anything. <laughs> so Maggie, a couple of other things I've got. I have the wand from Willow in a frame. So my really? original wand from Willow I have, yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, which is in fact made of fiberglass. They found a real twig that looked like that. And then they cast it and molded several duplicates out of fiberglass, which were the ones we used for the actual production. Uh, I would have loved my Professor Flitwick wand to go along with my Willow wand to make my wand collection complete. But uh, nonetheless, as Harrison says, it was all kept very out the way, and uh, we weren't gifted anything at the end of the uh, at the end of the filming like that. Mm. Do you have a reproduction of your uh, Potter wand? Yes, I do indeed. Yes, yes, <laughs> I wave it daily. <laughs> now, indeed, I'm looking forward to the day where uh, any of you will be able to say in a future project, I kept my lightsaber. I know. I'm still after that role. Every time they talk to me about a new Star Wars movie or part of the series, I say, well, this time do I get a lightsaber? I mean, I was delighted in uh, in Rogue One when I, for the first time, I get to hold a weapon. I had a blaster in that. Uh, yeah. So that's really fun. The day the props uh, department come to you, and uh, they say, okay, come in this room here. There's a table, and on it are um, several weapons laid out. And they say, choose your weapon. And uh, I picked the very biggest gun that was there. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of fun to finally get hold of a Star Wars blaster. And do you remember the one I had in Solo as Weasel? It was huge. It was like a bazooka that I had. Yeah, yeah it was a big gun. I remember yeah. having to hold that on top of the bike. I was like, Dad, why are you choosing this one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because but, yeah, one day the lightsaber, one day the lightsaber. I'm ready for it. Look, <clears throat> you have to make the noise okay. though, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. And Maggie, thank you. That was a great question. What do we have next? And here's one from Emily. What was the biggest challenge that you have each faced mm. in your careers? Mm. Well, that's deep, Emily. Thank you. 
the biggest challenge we faced in our career. I mean, some roles are more challenging than others. Uh, for me, the most challenging role that I had was um, the physically challenging role of Marvin, the paranoid android in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, mm. merely because the costume was so heavy and so difficult to operate. I couldn't see anything. The only vision I had was two screens inside the head where I could see a view from a camera that was mounted between the eyes of Marvin and also a view from the film camera that was transmitted into me. Yeah. But the costume weighed two thirds my own body weight. So I had to lift that as I walked around and say dialogue at the same time. So yeah, for me, that was a real, a real challenge. A job that I thought was going to be quite easy turned out to be one of the most challenging and difficult ones. Yeah, that, that just the gargantuan bulbous head. And, oh, yeah. And just, just. And when they were making the costume, it just kept getting bigger and bigger. Because they said, well, in the book, it's a brain the size of a planet. But I said, well, well not literally. We're nearly there now. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's like, it was, kind of, it was kind of a metaphor. It was Marvin was bragging. And okay, you know. <laughs> Costumers. Mm. What about you, H? Was it uh, playing Pomet? Was that challenging? or? Yeah, I think so. Like, and then it was like, I remember it was a very quite a heavy costume to yeah you know, can live. And then also the longer you were in it, the hotter it would get. And then sort of mm. you start to sweat and then you the vision was on the start has become worse because the sweat in the moisture inside is just becoming a whole lot worse. Yeah. But yeah, I think that was the most challenging out of mine so far. And I think for me, it was probably the robot that me and Dad had. I hadn't been used to lifting something so heavy. Uh, nowhere near on the scale of Marvin, but for me, physically, I don't know, it was a pretty heavy robot, that one, wasn't it, Dad? And I, I, I just yeah, thought it was. Sort of, mm. sort of working with something like that, but still, it was really cool. Still had a lot of fun with it. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. It's nice. Emily, thank you. Wonderful question. Uh, what's next? Here's one from uh, Emily. Maybe the same Emily, maybe a different Emily. If you weren't actors, what career do you think you'd have? Hmm. Um, I think I, I I like doing art anyway. I, I'm an artist on the side. So I, I sort of paint in between bits. So I probably do that full time. What uh, what type of painting? Uh, well, I don't have anything. Watercolors, oils uh, at the moment. Um, and you thought of a lot of animals. Uh, so yeah, I, I sell prints at the moment and... Why don't you yeah. direct Emily to your website, Annabelle, where she can see some? I have a website, yeah. it's called annabelledavis.co.uk And uh, yeah, they sort of little pin badges that I design and, and, then, and then print and then original pieces of art as well on there. And she ships all over the world. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> you owe me the commission on that plug, yeah. <laughs> 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 absolutely, absolutely. It's excellent. So, uh, Harrison, how about you? What do you? Uh... I have a massive interest in the police, just generally. And it's like, it's something that I sort of want to get into when I get older, maybe on the side of acting as well. And I've always been fascinated in it since I was a kid. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah, you like law oh. enforcement, don't you? Yeah. Harrison would never do anything wrong. I always feel guilty when we go out because he points out everything I'm doing wrong. Nice one. So yeah, Thank Emily, um, for me, I would have probably done something artistic as well. I enjoy graphic arts and uh, I, I do a lot of video editing work now, but I think that's as a result of being an actor and being within that world. But yeah, I, um, I enjoy kind of artistic things. So, who knows if I hadn't been an actor, what I would be doing. My dad was an insurance man, which was quite a dull job. He didn't seem to enjoy it very much. So uh, I wouldn't have wanted to follow in his footsteps. Entertainment industry is far more exciting. Certainly more than insurance. We can agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> Emily, thank you very much. Great one. And here's one from Nick. Do you have any fun behind the scenes stories from filming mm. Harry Potter? We've done the banana story. Yeah, <laughs> that was a fun story. That one. Um, let's think. Okay, on the very last day of filming all of the movies, I was fortunate enough to be on set filming one of my last scenes as Grip Hook, and uh, and that day Rupert Grint uh, brought in an ice cream van. He collects very strange things, and he's a collector. He has an ice cream van 
Hmm. Which actually still works, and and uh, on that day he thought it'd be lovely if he made everyone on the crew ice cream. So I've got um, a memory of him and Emma Watson inside this ice cream van, working the machine, and it not producing proper ice cream. It was just like a liquid kind of came out instead. It was very runny ice cream, and trying to serve this and getting it all over them and all over the ice cream van, it was a mess. So they wanted to cheer everyone up and serve ice cream, but it just didn't work out. Mm. Here's your uh, here's a nice, here's a sweet glop for you. There you go. Exactly. They need a freezing charm to make it work. <laughs> I, I was about to say. I'm sure in the wizarding world, it was you could have justified it as some kind of delicacy. Yes, exactly. Glacio, whatever. I forget what this charm is now. I don't think there is one. Yes, <laughs> indeed. Uh, so, uh, Annabelle Harrison, any 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 interesting stories from anything that uh, that you've worked on that uh, you could recall? Um, oh, I don't know. There's, there's loads of uh, on dumping ground. I, I trip over a lot. <laughs> there's a lot of just stupid ones like that. Um, but apart from that, not really. Oh, when when me and Dad shared the part of the fighting robot, they'd always come in with Vibina to sort of help us do another take. Um, I never like Vibina so much. It's, uh, yeah, I never so. got any Vibina. How come you got yeah. Vibina when you're in that suit? Well, I, was I, I was lucky if I got water. <laughs> they put the little seat down and they'd be like, you want some Ibiza? No. So yeah, that was great. Um, apart from that, no, not really. Yeah, it's all good. <laughs> that, that, that means, theoretically, that means the way things went smoothly. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> Most of these stories are all come from a mishap of some kind. So. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, indeed. Harrison, any uh, any interesting thing from or anything maybe from your YouTube videos that you've uh, shot? I remember I saw the one where you were trying to eat the digestive biscuit off your forehead. <laughs> that, that that was amusing. Yeah, um, not sure. I'm kind of about to put on one. Um, oh, boy. Um, well, I always embarrass Harrison when I take part in his YouTube videos because um, I play like the naive dad who doesn't know anything about <laughs> gaming at all. I'm absolutely useless at it. I mean, Space Invaders is about my limit, and I even get confused with that now. It's really, if you check it out, there's a video where they're both playing Lego Star Wars, and it's really funny. Yeah, I love doing all the voices as well. Yeah. And Dad <laughs> yeah, will make the sound effects while yeah. he's shooting, but it's like the game does it for you, Dad. But you can't help yourself, can you? Go, do, do, do. <laughs> <laughs> the the pew, 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 indeed. So, uh, Nick, thank you. Very fun one. Hey, what do we have next? Hey, here's one from Matthew. If you could spend a day living in the Star Wars universe, mm. where would you go and what would you do? Matthew, that's a really great question. Really it's just started cool. my imagination going. You know what? I'd love to walk around the Death Star. Oh. Like oh, sneak nice. around, you know, like the, the Rebels did, kind of sneak around there. Maybe put on a Stormtrooper outfit to blend in and have everyone say to me, guess what? Aren't you a little short for a Stormtrooper? <laughs> I'd soon get tired of that one, wouldn't I? Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, sneaking around there, maybe uh, jump in a, a shuttlecraft, steal that. Uh, that'll be fun. No, Where don't. else? I mean, I've been to Endor. I've done that. been there. Mm -hmm. I'd kind of like to go there. Been to yeah. Tatooine as well. Done Tatooine. Mm-hmm. I mean, I need to add up sometime all the places I've been in the Star Wars galaxy, don't I? Yeah, sure. That'd be a long list. <laughs> mm. What was it in uh, in uh, Rogue One? Where were we in? Was it Jeddah? That planet was that that what that was called? I should I never do my that. thinking out loud on a panel. I've, I regret <laughs> that. In the all the fans are like, "Oh my god, he's getting it wrong." Oh no, no, trust me. I'm sure. I'm sure. They're, I'm, I'm sure they're they're correcting it. So I'll, I'll ask our producer if they have I'm the sure answer. Feel better, yeah. roll it. <laughs> But yeah, loads of different planets I've been on, loads of places. I mean, I don't actually know what planet I'm on right now, to be honest. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, Harrison, where would you go in the Star Wars universe? Oh, sure. Um, Tatooine seems quite a fun place. Like, out where um, I bring up my gig of pod racing, and then that just means yeah. a fun atmosphere to be around. When that it's happens. a bit hot. It's a bit hot though. You need twice the amount of sunscreen because there's two suns. Mm -hmm. Wow! So you get a tan from every angle. Well, yeah, maybe, maybe that's the place <laughs> for me then. Mm. Yeah, you love the sun, don't you? <laughs> no, I'd like I'd like to be the Endor because I feel like you two have been there. I still haven't been, so maybe I want to go and see the little 
sort of um, treehouse. But Matthew, yeah. I don't know whether you've had the chance yet to go to Galaxy's Edge. I mean, that is the closest you can get to actually yeah. being in a Star Wars movie and uh, kind of experiencing what it would be like to go to the Star Wars galaxy. It is incredible. Mm. Really, really Even though I'm in the movies, I was completely spellbound by the whole experience. Yeah, it was mm. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I, 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 as an amusement park uh, employee at, at, in the Orlando area, I help out occasionally at Galaxy's <laughs> Edge, and I'll, I'll leave it at that. But uh, as myself, I would like to go to Naboo because that looks, when it's not being invaded, it looks very placid and relaxing. Yeah, as long as he's not being invaded, it's very civilized there. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And Matthew, thank you. Very fun one. And a reminder to our audience, if you would like to chat with our guests like I am now or purchase a personalized autograph, you can sign up at galaxycon.com. And let's go ahead and roll another one. And here's one from Josh. Who or what inspired you to become an actor? Well, you know what? I wasn't really inspired to become an actor. I fell into acting by chance. Um my grandmother heard a radio announcement looking for short actors to be in the latest Star Wars installment, Return of the Jedi, to play Ewoks. And uh, she mentioned this radio announcement to my mum, who called the studio, and they said, well, you know what, we've got everyone we need. And uh, my mum uh, managed to persuade them somehow to see me. So I went up to Elstree Studios in London, where they make the movies, and uh, I was interviewed by a secretary who said, uh, do you want to play an Ewok? I said, yeah. And she said, uh, do you love Star Wars? I said, yeah. She said, okay, that's enough for me. Go get yourself measured up for a costume. And that was it. That's how I got into Star Wars. And ever since then, I've kind of loved performing and acting and uh, being part of the movie industry. So that's how it started. I mean, obviously, I've had inspiration along the way, having worked with all the actors I've worked with. But uh, to start with, I fell into it by chance. Yeah, there you go. And my kids are going to say my father inspired me. I know they are. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> when you've grown up with it, like we've been lucky enough to have, and you visit that, you can't help but sort of think, wow, this is a really cool place to come and then, and then work. Because it doesn't feel like working at all. So, yeah, 100% because we've grown up with it watching Dad. So. And then you find out it is work when you start doing it. <laughs> yeah. No, honestly, I, I, I love it. I love it. <laughs> uh, absolutely so harrison uh so say so done some gaming whether from your broadcasting and gaming or anything else what's uh what's been your inspiration um i'm not sure it um it's more like what i've done like and i've watched dad do it it's sort of like i know it just became more like yeah i think it's becoming what i want to do it yeah he's very fun with it in set and he died on the stage doing it yeah who's inspired you on youtube who are your youtube heroes harrison yeah um mm, i'm quite like the side men like ks9 that mm -hmm. uh dan tvm i used to watch a lot he he's the one that made me start in me to create my own channel oh. and, uh, yeah and you oh, met Dan, didn't you, years ago as well, which was cool. Yeah, there's a vlog on that on my YouTube channel. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Awesome, very awesome. And uh, for, what, what is your YouTube channel called, so our audience knows? Uh, it's Harrison X Gamer Day. Harrison X Gamer, yeah. Harrison X Gamer. Yeah, exactly, yeah. One word. Although yeah, he's still okay. gaming, even though he's an X Gamer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, so. And Josh, thank you. Very fun question. What do we have next? Hey, here's one from Justin. Which actor would you love to have a chance to work with? Hello, Justin. Thanks for this question. Uh, for me, it's Will Farrell. I'm a particular fan of his work. Uh, just uh, he's just a funny guy. Just look at him, and he's funny. He's got a funny face. He's got a funny kind of funny demeanor about him. Yeah. Uh, John Candy was another comedy hero of mine. I'd love to have had the chance to work with John. Um. So yeah, for me, it's definitely Will Ferrell at this point. Love to work with him. That is, that would be a fun combination. <laughs> Indeed, it would. Yeah. What about you, Amber? Um, I don't know. I'm just kind of in top of my head. I really like Phoebe Waller-Bridge. Um, hmm. and all the stuff that he's done. 
And Vera Farmiga, I watched her in Bates Motel and just loved yeah, she's the amazing. way that she played yeah. Norma. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I'd just love to meet those two people, mm. like, for a start, but then to work with them would, would be insane. Mm. So. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Harrison, any actor you'd like to work with or actress? Either Karen Edgerton or someone like Jim Carrey. Ooh. Oh, really? Wow. Very cool. Is Jim Carrey still acting? Has he retired? He, yeah, he's still, he's still, it's sort of, you know, he, he bounces around, you know, he's, he's mercurial. <laughs> okay, good, excellent. We, we agree about that way too. And Justin, thank you. Very fun one. Hey, what do we have next? Hey, here's one from Will. Which character that you've played do you feel you relate to the most? Hmm. Um. Uh, okay, Will, thank you very much. I don't know whether you've seen my series Life's Too Short. I guess I relate to Warwick in Life's Too Short quite a lot. Um, yeah. I think I'm a bit nicer than he is. I'm a, I'm a li little less bitter about the business than Warwick in Life's Too Short. But I kind of relate to his attitude sometimes. And like when life kind of gets on top of you and feels like he's getting the better of you. So uh, I, I can relate to him in that. Um, I don't feel I relate to any of the Ewok characters, though, particularly. Hmm. It's a very good question, this. It's deep, isn't it, guys? Mm. I feel like for me, it, it's got to be Sasha, just because I don't know. The other characters I've played are cool, but I don't feel like I really have any any similarity to them at all. Well, you can't relate to a fighting droid. No, yeah. not, not particularly, not particularly. But, um, but Sasha, like, uh, the show, uh, the producers sort of learn about what you're into mm. and your other skills, and one of mine is art, so... Sasha then became an artist and yeah. they, they sort of uh, bring in little aspects of you into the character. He's a lot more angry than me and stuff and I think I, again, <laughs> like Dan, I'm a little bit of a nice alone. I feel like Sasha's like my angry big sister, mm. but I can still relate a lot to her. So. She yes. is a tornado in that show, isn't oh, she? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sasha's the Annabelle that we see at breakfast time. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I can't argue with that, though. <laughs> First thing in the morning. Oof. <laughs> Indeed. So. Uh, Harrison, how about you? Is there a, you, um, do you feel a connection to... I think Pomet was quite a fun character to play. I know, yeah, he quite a normal person to be. Um, mm. Yeah. Although, the way you hoard your money, you're not unlike a goblin, Harrison, I will say. <laughs> He gets given all this cash for he his birthday and we it. never see it again. He never spends it. Never spends it. Hides it away like a like a true Gringotts goblin. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That'll work. That makes him a wiser young man than I was at his age, I'll tell you that. Oh, and, yeah. Will, and Will, thank you. That was a wonderful question. Thank you, Will. Uh, what's next? And from Matthew, to piggyback on the Star Wars question, if you could spend one day living in the Harry Potter world. Where would you oh my go? gosh! Oh, I mean, I'd have been diagonally. I mean, I love shopping. I'd love to go <laughs> down there. Yeah, a hundred percent. Hmm, that's a really great question. Let's think of all the Harry Potter places. I don't think I want to be going to Azkaban particularly, do I? No. Miserable no. place. Okay, oh, I'd love to ride the Hogwarts bus. Express. You want to go on the night bus? Yeah, okay. the night bus is my favorite out of all the Harry Potter. That's like my favorite sequence. It just looks oh. like fun. You get a bit yeah. car sick, don't you? Or bus uh -huh. sick. Uh -huh. And let's think about that. Yeah, that's a good one, Annabelle. I think I'd like to go on the Hogwarts Express and go, uh, oh, yeah. go to Hogwarts and be greeted by Hagrid as I arrive. Oh, That'd yeah, and on the boats then to the castle's quite cool. Mm. I love boats. There's a lot. Harrison, how about you? Where would you go? Um, I think um, it's not so much a plane. And it he can get me like be in the flying car like oh, and yeah, go and buy the train. Um yeah. Mm. I think that for big and forest would be quite a cool place to go and see mm. and be in that environment. Yeah. Mm. Well I'll tell you something else. I'm the only person to have ever done one thing. The only person to have ever ridden a Segway around around Privet Drive. And also the only person who ever driven a Segway around the Great Hall as well. 
Oh, wow. No one else has done that, and no one else can ever say they've done that. Okay, cool. <laughs> very true, very true. And I believe the video that I shot while doing that little tour on my Segway is actually on one of the DVDs as an extra feature. Oh, wow. They kind of slightly speeded it up. I went around the whole studio and did a little tour with the camera. Because they actually gave the cast video cameras to make sort of video diaries. And I decided that's what I wanted to do, do a Segway tour around the studios and sets. That's very cool. Yeah, thank you. Very nice. Very nice indeed. Thank you for that, Matthew. And for my two cents, uh, I'd love to go to Ollivander's just because my best friend and housemate at Universal helps the one keeper of the Ollivander's in that attraction. So. Oh, I love that. When you get chosen for your wand, okay. it's an amazing experience, isn't it? It's fabulous. Oh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And uh, right outside that shop, I've got an amazing picture of Annabelle and Harrison having a wand duel with Michael Gambon, mm -hmm. a.k.a. Um, Professor Dumbledore. <laughs> Yeah, oh, it's right fantastic, on. isn't it? It's a great and a, picture. A, a, a wonderful actor. God, I don't know just how to talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. Matthew, thank you very much for that. I think we have time for one more question, and our producers let me know. we got a really good one to go out on. And this comes from Glenn. Out of all the projects you have worked on, what has been your favorite? Thank you, Glenn. I mean, for me, it has to be Star Wars Return of the Jedi. It was the first movie I ever did, and I still look at it back very fondly. And without it, I wouldn't have been an actor. So uh, I look at the character of Wicket very fondly and also that movie. And having been a fan of Star Wars since I was seven, to actually be a part of that Star Wars galaxy now is such a privilege and an honor. And uh, I do feel very lucky and I'm still a fan today as well. And I'm excited every time I get a call to, to go back to that galaxy far, far away once again. It's terrific. Really love it. Thank you, Glenn, very much. Thank you. Um, I think for me, it's probably the dumping ground just because of how long I've been on it. Uh, I'm on my seventh year this year. So um, wow. it's, just, it's such a big part of my life. And I spend six, seven months of the year away from home filming it. So they're sort of my second family. Yeah. Um, so just for that reason, um, yeah, dumping ground. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. Ed, Harrison, bring us home. What's been your favorite thing that you've worked on? I think I'm going to say Dark the Giant Slayer because I know they're quite fun. I remember it was, I would be eaten by a giant, but then I would be in a harness and get lifted right up in the air. And it was just a fun, it was just a really fun time to be. You know, like I'd be lifted up, rolled around in this harness. And yeah, I just need to really like filming that one. Yeah, yeah so, oh, so that sequence is at the beginning of the movie. There's a play that kind of illustrates what the where the giants live and what they're going to do to the to the village. And uh, Harrison plays one of the villagers against a very tall six foot seven actor who's playing one of the giants. And uh, so Harrison gets lifted up and pretended to be eaten, <laughs> which is great. <laughs> oh my! And I actually directed that sequence of the film. Uh, which was exciting. Yeah. yeah. Oh, very, very nice. Very nice. Okay, he's going to eat you. Well, not really, but you get it. <laughs> uh, Glenn, thank you. That was a great one to go out on. And GalaxyCon viewers, this has been my time with the Davis family, but it absolutely does not have to be yours. If you'd like to chat with our guests like I have today or purchase a personalized autograph, please sign up at galaxycon.com. And while you're there, please check out our schedule of upcoming events just like this one. Uh, Davis, this has been an absolute delight. Any final words for our audience before we go backstage? No, thanks for all your great questions. And also, mm -hmm. thanks for being fans of the projects that we've been involved with as well. And uh, everybody out there, stay safe and look forward to seeing you in person one day very soon. Thank you. May everyone. the force be with you all. Thank you. Absolutely. It's been my absolute pleasure to serve you today. Once again, thank you for joining us on the GalaxyCon virtual stage. Thank you again to our audience for joining us, and thank you for your, those great questions. Hope to see you all again soon. Until then, thank bye, you, bye, Patty. everyone. Thank you, Patty. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. Bye-bye. Yeah. Take care, everyone, and please Ooh. keep washing those hands. <laughs> oh, yeah. Bye.